here to present a record of historical events pertaining to God's ancient people, the Israelites. The name Israel today is one of international prominence. It is also prominent in the Bible. I am told that the name Israel appears in the Bible more than 2,000 times. We believe that the experiences of the Israelites throughout the centuries have been foretold in the Bible. Here in the Sea of Galilee, here in the flow of the Jordan, history moves from day to day. The sun that burned upon this land so many days ago still burns and bears witness to the fulfillment of the Bible's prophecies. Here in Israel, a people turn the soil that turns their destiny. A people live day by day in the unfolding of prophecies. They have conquered the heat and planted the trees. They have built homes, and a world that watched marveled at what they had done. Predictions centuries old were coming true. A world watched these determined people working their kibbutzim, and always in the background of their lives the inspiration of uh, rebuilding their ancient nation and homeland. The younger generation carries on the ancient traditions. Today, youth comes to Daganya to form new seedlings for new settlements. Thousands of children have been trained in Daganya for their future in Israel. Young men and women, strong in their traditions, aware of their present dangers, go to work, sharpening their skills that they might strengthen that tiny nation now being rebuilt. The Israelites bite into the ancient soil. As the nation of Israel keeps growing in strength, a third generation here in the Daganya is growing up, a new breed with uh, deep roots in the soil, a, a generation that seems to blend into the landscape. Israel today is a nation at work bending their purpose in their backs, feeling the texture of their dreams and the stretch of their muscles and the deep-knotted logic of their brains. While they work under the sky, they know the darkening clouds are there, and yet they are not frozen in fear. A confidence stirs them on. They do not think of disasters to come. They think mostly of the work that has to be done. Courage and work keep them there. For they have paid a price, paid it in human suffering and dedicated lives. Gravestones with the break markings mark well the memories of those who died, that their ancient dreams uh, had not been dreamed in vain. Here is a people surviving persecution for centuries moving across time like a tide toward the fulfillment day. Peace now rests upon this land. The sounds of war and anguish are not there. The sounds of peace are heard in the purring of tractor and trucks.
Life goes on, and peace is a natural soil for happiness. And people in peace are like plants in a soil that is rich. There is a time now for these people of the desert land where the soil was made wet and rich, time for rejoicing, for feeling the pride of the past and confidence that the future will be theirs. There is time now for the joy of harvest, and later there will be the joy of prophecies being fulfilled. For this, in reality, is the meaning of what is taking place in Israel today. These prophecies are as history written in advance. To have a knowledge of them and of the wonderful manner in which they are being fulfilled is to have our faith strengthened in the Word of God and in its promises concerning God's new world of tomorrow. The future is as bright as the promises of God, and those promises are very bright indeed. In our day, Israel has been reborn as a nation, and we open with a brief summary of events which uh, led to that rebirth, and now on with the presentation. The sounds of war beat like drums and herald the history of things to come. The shapes of nations are broken, sometimes to form again in the wake of war. Europe, 1914. The Archduke of Bulgaria is assassinated. Authoritative sources predict the possibility of a major war. And that struggle did actually develop into the First World War. One of the nations to be born following that war was Israel. It would perhaps be more accurate to say reborn, for this ancient people had been a nation long before. It was like no other nation that ever existed, for it functioned under the direction of God. In the Bible, the kings of Israel were spoken of as sitting upon the throne of the Lord. The last king of Israel was Zedekiah. Jerusalem, 606 B.C. King Zedekiah of Israel has been dethroned by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and the Israelites are taken captive to Babylon. Babylon, Israelites still held captives. Babylon is conquered by Medes and Persians. King Cyrus of Persia has issued a decree of liberation, permitting the Israelites to return to Palestine to rebuild Jerusalem and their temple. While the Israelites were granted permission by Cyrus to return to their land, they were not given permission to reestablish their own government, and they continued to be a vassal people to whatever nation conquered Palestine. When Jesus came, they were a subject people to Rome. Titus has besieged and finally destroyed Jerusalem. Many Israelites killed, but large numbers scattered to other parts of the world. This occurred in 70 A.D. Thus Israel lost completely its national image. This situation remained unchanged throughout the centuries until now. This dark period is referred to by the Israelites as the dispersion. Moses foretold all of this. He also foretold their regathering as we see it taking place today. One of his prophecies is recorded in the book of Deuteronomy. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. 
and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayst live. Just as Moses foretold the ultimate regathering of Israel to the promised land, he also had previously foretold the long period of punishment which would come upon this people. In Leviticus we hear him saying, And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then will I punish you seven times more for your sins. World War begins. Turks ejected from Jerusalem and Palestine by General Allenby. Balfour Declaration opens ancient homeland to Jewish refugees and pioneers. Zionist movement spreads throughout the world. 1948, the new state of Israel is formed. The full significance of Israel's liberation beginning in 1914, is noted in a forecast by Jesus. Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. This prophetic times of the Gentiles is the same period in history as the 2,520 years of Israel's punishment. 606 B.C. Daniel interprets dream which the Lord had given to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. This dream was a forecast of four world powers. Great Babylon is fallen. Medo-Persia is fallen. Greece falls. The Roman Empire is divided. This is a replica of the human-like image which Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. Daniel's interpretation of the image was that the head represented the Babylonian Empire, the breast and the arms, the Medo-Persian Empire, the thighs, the Grecian Empire, and its legs, which were of iron, the Roman Empire. Daniel calls special attention to the feet and toes of the image, which represented the divided state of the Roman Empire. This divided empire continued as seen in the various states of Europe until they were overthrown in the First World War, which began in 1914. Daniel's prophecy foretold that following the overthrow of the divided Roman Empire, the kingdom of the Messiah would be established, a divine government, which, as Daniel foretold, would stand forever. Thus, the regathering of Israel arising out of the First World War is seen to be one of the preparations for the messianic kingdom. But this regathering, according to the prophecies, was to be accompanied by many difficulties. The prophet Jeremiah declared, Lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of. Hitler attacks the Jews. Jews persecuted throughout Germany. Jews persecuted in Austria. Jews persecuted in Poland. Hitler causes death of six million Jews. Arabs and Jews fighting in border clashes. It was indeed, as prophecy predicted, a time of trembling and fear for the Israelites. Again and again, prophecy becomes a reality. Another prophecy which now has become history was spoken by Jeremiah. Behold, 
The days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all lands whither he hath driven them. And I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them. This prophecy indicates that when the time came for the Israelites to return to their land, efforts would be made to induce them to return. The Lord said that he would send for fishers to fish them. Fishers used baits. And the efforts of the Zionist movement, beginning with Theodore Herzl, might well have been the fulfillment of this prophecy. 1896. Theodore Herzl has formed what he calls the Zionist Organization. Zionist Organization activates worldwide events to attract Jews to live in Palestine. Surely this was a symbolic fisherman attracting the fish. We have already called attention to the bitter persecutions which came upon the Jews. This, we think, might well fulfill the prophecy concerning the hunters which were to hunt them or drive them back to their land. But what about prophecy which had not yet been fully revealed by history? For this we turn to the 38th chapter of Ezekiel. Here we find the Israelites described as dwelling safely in their land having been brought back from the sword. But prophecy reveals that before Israel attains permanent peace and security, an aggressive force from the north will threaten their destruction. Prophecy reveals that when this occurs, the Lord will intervene on behalf of his people. By this demonstration of God's protection over them, the Israelites will come to realize that their return to the promised land has been accomplished through the providence of God then also all the world will come to know that God has delivered his people and that their Messiah is ruling over them. One feels the nearness of prophecy revealed as close as tomorrow's headline. Let's go back to one of the most famous prophecies of all time, one which all of us remember mingled with childhood and the music of Christmas. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with justice and judgment from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. One of God's prophets also said, A king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation. And in sure dwellings. And in quiet resting places. These promises were made to the Israelites. Not just to the Israelites of today but also to those millions and millions of homeless wandering Jews who never saw their homeland. 
to those who cried upon the wailing wall in Jerusalem or perished in torture chambers. These promises were made to leaders like Herzl and to all the ardent supporters of Zionism. Yes, to all, even though they may now be sleeping in death. Moses in his day foretold the coming of the Messiah. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, and unto him ye shall hearken. And the people to whom this promise was made are all dead, but the promise still stands. For God knew that in his own due time they would be awakened from the sleep of death. The promises of their resurrection the resurrection of all mankind, Jews and Gentiles, are repeated over and over again in the Bible. The events in Israel, the promised land, reveal prophecy coming into fruition with incredible accuracy. Those who are aware of this see in it the evidence of the approaching messianic kingdom. This is as inevitable as the rising sun. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Most reassuring indeed. But, Mr. Woodworth, as the presentation moved from one scene to another, I noticed that almost nothing was included from the New Testament. Would you say that the prophecies of the New Testament confirm those of the Old Testament with respect to Israel? They surely do. To the followers of Jesus, the New Testament is both a confirmation and explanation of the Old Testament. The New Testament presents Jesus as the Messiah of promise and uh, the one who, in fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, gave his life as the Redeemer and Savior of both Israel and the whole world. Jesus is that great prophet whom Moses promised the Lord would raise up unto the people. One more question. We have had many thoughts presented to us concerning the Messianic kingdom. Are we to understand that this is to be a duly organized government which will function throughout the earth? By all means. Jesus will be the ruler supreme in that government, and his followers of the present age will be associated with him. But these will be exalted to spiritual life, invisible to man. However, they will have human representatives. These will be the ancient servants of uh, God, such as the, the prophets and others. Someday the news will go out to the world. Listen. Today the world has received startling news from Israel. It is reported that personages describing themselves as Bible prophets and other servants of God are raised from the dead. I repeat, it is reported that ancient servants of God are raised from the dead. Stand by now for what promises to be the greatest event in human history. Israel, just in. It is reported that personages calling themselves Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and other Bible prophets have presented sufficient evidence to make it now conclusive. They are risen from the dead. Now here is another important news flash, Israel. Resurrected ancient servants of God are reported assembling to receive governmental instruction from their exalted Messiah. Assurance is given that a worldwide government of peace is near. I repeat the following all-important news event. Israel, resurrected ancient servants of God are reported assembling to receive governmental instructions from their exalted Messiah. Assurance is given that a worldwide government of peace is near. Well, that reminds me of a question that the Apostle Paul asked the Roman governor. He asked if it should be thought a thing incredible that God should raise the dead. And, of course, it is not incredible. Uh, we do not know in detail the exact shape events will take. However, if it is not just according to our newscaster's preview, we can be assured that it will be much better. The Bible tells us that God's ancient worthies will be made princes in all the earth, 
And Jesus said that the people from all over the earth, uh, would, symbolically speaking, to sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom. For this to be fulfilled, they will need to be raised from the dead. That is very evident. And as we have learned, the Bible promises that ultimately all the dead will be restored to life. Surely God has a wonderful plan for his human creatures, a plan which we can be sure will be completely carried out. The Bible says that known unto God are all his works from the foundation of the world. So the plan of God for his people Israel and for all mankind was in his mind and later revealed through his word for our guidance. It was there when the mountains were created, when the oceans were brought forth and licked the land a thousand miles, and the rivers came running into the sea. Yes, even before the sea was created in which the fish swim, and before a billion flowers turn their faces to the sun. God's plan for Israel and for the world was in his mind long before the splicing waterfall. It was there when Eden was created. There, even before the pulling tide, before the circling sun, before the plants broke through the crusted earth and the rivers cut their way to the sea. God's promises were recorded in the Bible before the plane and before the boat and before the train and the scream of the rocket, before the gallant cities pointed several fingers to the sky. Yes, God's plan was there before all the cities that were ever built, before the pyramids. And today, through the prophecies of the Bible, the plan of God can be seen unfolding in the headline which announced the news. We live in the dawn of the new day foretold in the Bible. And like every dawn, it is a vision of incalculable beauty and a vision of assurance that all God's promises are soon to be fulfilled. And friends, you can be further assured of this by reading the little book, The Future of Israel and the World. The stirring events presented in this program are all contained in the book, The Future of Israel and the World, and in greater detail. We are living in a remarkable period of world history. You owe it to yourself to be informed concerning its prophetic significance, and especially so since this knowledge will give you a bright hope for the days and years ahead. To view the booklet online, visit www.dawnbible.com or to receive a hard copy of the booklet by mail, send us your name and postal mailing address and ask for the booklet by name. The title of the booklet for this program is The Future of Israel and the World. Send an email to dawnbible at aol.com. The booklet will be mailed to you free and without obligation. And now... Goodbye, and may God bless you.